Moving pretty quickly with the wing on wing configuration. Whisker pull, definitely a way to go for longer passages. The thing is not towing very well. It's going all over the place. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna make it on this trip, but we'll see. Definitely not the kind of thing I want to tow across an ocean. Just wouldn't make it. on Boca Grande Key. Wasn't able to make it here last time, but today I think we're gonna do it. So this is a situation where the motor is gonna be very useful to have, because I do not think I could row against this current and wind. It's really, really now all we have to do is get over to there. I brought the anchor just in case uh, when the motor dies so we don't go out to sea. Nice. Oh, it's water. Look, it's like, it's so clear. All right, I'm just going to tie up to this uh, palm tree here. Of course, I made some some pockets for the for the dinghy. This is a pretty good beach, and this is a pretty good palm tree. Um, and I'm only saying that because it's the only palm tree. It's not an exceptional palm tree at all. How does it feel to be on land, Zoe? It feels feels a little abnormal. So I had a little mishap with the dinghy. I think it's salvageable. Um, we're gonna need some epoxy. Yeah. Alright, this is Zoe's sand castle. And this is my sand castle. Vote on which one's better in the survey. Screen. Done with this island, off to the dry tortugas. Not a lot of dinghies here. Sailing in the rain now. The wind keeps shifting a lot too, so I have to come out here and adjust the, the course a bunch. Wind vane. Uh, I don't really want to use the autopilot yet though. It's been raining all day. It's, it's Everything's wet kind of in here. The floor is slippery. It's really hot, but Every time I open the window, it just like pours in more water. Um, it's been raining for a long time today. The wind just did a big shift though, 180 degrees. Sometimes that kind of signifies the end of these little systems. So fingers crossed. Um, we're going pretty slowly too, but now the current's going with us now. So at least we're making some headway. I predict we'll get there either a sunset or just after dark. Um, hopefully it doesn't take till tomorrow, but I'll probably run the motor if we don't get there by dark. I've been putting the whisker pole up and down and up and down and up and down all day as the conditions have changed. The wind is just kind of circling the compass today. Uh, I, I was having problems with the pole kind of uh, not staying out on the sail, trying to ride back and, and chafe against the shrouds. Um, and I found I could use the uh, opposite sheet if I just hook it around a cleat up forward. So, and then it comes back to here and it 
pulls the pole forward and holds the pole nice and steady. So now the pole is stabilized by the topping lift, the, uh, the starboard sheet, and the port sheet. And uh, that keeps the sail even more steady, especially when we're in these really rolly, you know, downwind courses. Um, we got about two foot of seas right now. It's a little bit rolly. And uh, this, of course, we got the preventer out on the main, just kind of keeping things steady. And now we're moving along finally. I wish this thing blocked the rain better. We're just coming up in uh, Dry Tortugas and Fort Jefferson here. I'm gonna short tack my way up the channel again because that's the fun way to, to do it. It looks like there's, uh, I don't know, maybe a dozen a dozen boats out here. And uh, if there's not any room, we'll just have to, we'll have to make some. right next to the dock. And we tacked in and went pretty good until I got the practice of the tacks. And um, we're gonna go ashore in a little bit once it stops raining. There's a lot of birds over here behind me. Here's the entrance to Fort Jefferson. You can see the lighthouse up there. Thomas Jefferson originally commissioned a drawbridge when he designed this to be built, but um, they didn't. They didn't put that in. Rich saw in the, uh, the, the wall. I wish I had my paraglider. I could totally fly this. Someone's yelling, you know? They said our boat is flowing to the dock. <laughs> We're gonna run. <laughs> oh no! footage of this but basically what happened was the boat drug anchor and got pushed up against this uh, wharf here. Just got tow from these guys. We're trying to pull up the anchor now. Okay we're gonna go anchor on the lee side. Uh, we had to drop the anchor because we couldn't get it pulled up. The, uh, it's hard to communicate back and forth with the tow boat and uh, the person on the bow but no worries we have, a, we have a backup anchor of course it's not quite as good um, but I think on the lee side it won't be as, as uh, much wind shouldn't get us as much. Did you hear that guy say that we did a really good job tacking okay. last night? Going to retrieve the dinghy. I left it out here for an hour. This is what happened. Jesus. Let's see if we can get this thing back. Shovel that. Bird carcasses in here. All right, I'm being rescued for a second time. I tried to take the dinghy and it just flipped over. So we got this back to shore. My boat's still right side up. A little worried about Zoe out there. Um, I think we're going to be okay. okay. Little boats back on shore. Uh, the motor definitely got 
you know, flooded with salt water on the small on the dinghy, so that probably won't run right now. I mean, it definitely won't run right now. Um, if we're gonna hang out here and wait for a, a little bit of uh, the wind to kind of rain to lighten up, and then we'll, we need to anchor this boat in deeper water because we got kind of pushed up as the wind switched around, so we're kind of over coral now. Um, we got no room to drag. Uh, this is exciting, but stressful. This thing works as a pretty good drying rack. I just fished out the anchor. We had to let it go in the heat of the action when we were being towed off of the, the wharf. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I really don't know how that drag. I had at least 60 or 70 feet of line out. It was maybe 15, 10 to 15 feet of water. And I don't know why it didn't reset. This is a really, should be a really good anchor. Got like at least 30 feet of chain. Yeah, it's just, just it's baffling. So now the outboard, and when I flip the uh, dinghy, um, I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna take this apart, take apart the head and soak that in, in water and then uh, get that cleaned out. Maybe I can put that back together and salvage it. As far as damage, we got a few little nicks on the, the rub rail. Not a real big deal. Basically just kind of cosmetic. You could easily splice in a new piece of teak. Um, and then there's another one further up here, I think. So we got a little damage on here. So right now we, we moved over to the lee side of the island. And um, uh, that's, I feel better over here. There's a good sand. I got the Dan, one of the spare uh, anchors out. Um, I'm gonna go put the, the other anchor on the boat now. So I'll have two again. I really, this is why I like to have not just two, but three anchors. Cause once you lose your first anchor, then you still have two anchors. Process of trying to salvage this guy. I think he's earned, he's earned it. All right, I'm gonna take off the lower leg and I'll just soak all this. Take off the gas tank and I'll soak it all in the, the fresh water and I'll dry it out this evening and spray it with WD 40. Pretty awesome, you can pretty much take apart the whole motor with the 10 millimeter socket wrench. Okay, the dinghy motor is in a sorry state, but it's all soaking in water, trying to get that, that salt out of there. Um, that for a while, and then I'll start taking things out and cleaning them up. We got a small coming, trying to clear. There's a reef on the lee side over here, so I'm trying to get that out of our way. We're almost clear of it. Pretty spread out. I don't think it'll be too bad. Got caught with the jib out. I can't get it in. I just got the weight out. I got Zoe down below. I'm tethered in. made it through. Um, it's like hardly any wind at all now. It's so crazy. It's a flip that came. Um, we got the, we're just sailing back. I think we're going to do some uh, snorkeling now. Seems like pretty good weather right now.
All right, we're back anchored at Fort Jefferson, and uh, we're in another one of these uh, squalls. This time, mean, it sounds be at least 40, 40 knots of wind. The boat just rides it out so well. I anchored in 15 feet of water, and I've got 100 feet of road out. So we're, gonna, we're not going to drag anchor. We, we can't drag. It's got to be, got to stay. But there's, there's, we're safe on the lee side, so there's nothing we would drag into. We just go back out to sea. Um, and it should pass pretty quickly. Oh, it's already dying down. All right, we're definitely dragging. We dragged about 500 feet, so I just went out and I put um, an extra 75 feet of road out, so we have 175 feet, and that seems to have held us for now. But we drifted in like 45 feet of water, so it's a little bit deeper now. Um, so our scope isn't as good. Thanks for watching. Um, I thought it was really interesting how the squalls around Florida can get so much stronger than the ones I encountered in the Pacific. Like in the Pacific, maybe on my way to Hawaii at least, the ones I would run into would be maybe a five knot, maybe ten at the most increase in wind speed, and they're really not so bad. Whereas in Florida, they were just they would just be ridiculous. Um, you definitely had to be on your toes when you saw one coming and just put all the sail away. Um, so I've been a lot more cautious now, and it, I definitely. Uh, Take that to heart in my next video, I sail up from uh, Key West up to North Carolina. And currently I got the boat in Southport, North Carolina. If anyone is in the area interested in helping out on some projects, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. Um, I'll probably be here till kind of mid to the end of July-ish and uh, I'll have an email here. I'll see you guys next time.